All right, what's up, everybody? It's your old buddy Josh. Old buddy Josh in the house. Let me just make sure we're good to go here. All right. Looking good there. All right, hold on just a second. So this is some Reverend Horton Heat just a few minutes ago. Oh, man, you got to love some. The Rev, do you know there's no Suarez in Texas? Ain't no Suarez in Texas. Who knew? Who knew? All right, let's see what. Hold on just a second. There we go. Looking good. It looks like we're ready to rock and roll. All right. Kids are doing the homework. Wife is out of town. All right, good. So let's uh let's rock. Oops, hold on a second. Okay, I gotta verify it's me. All right. Oops. I'll do that later. All right, so good. Um all right, some good stuff. See, Mark's in the house. Right on, Mark, from PA. Noonan, check it in. Marie from PA. Uh, this guy says, do you look at annual discretionary bonuses when trying to decide if a home is affordable or just base salary? Well, the key word there is discretionary. Seems to me if you got to go that far into trying to afford a home, that uh, the, ho the home is probably not affordable, brother. Um, if you if you're trying to just oh, hold on a second, if you're trying to justify your ability to afford it by uh, a taking a debt, obviously, uh, b is by how much you're going to get and discretionary bonuses, which are inherently discretionary. I I wouldn't, no way. Um, Chicken Charlie Dan, right on. Dan's in the house. Hans. Happy Monday, Denise. Horseshoe Bay, Texas. Right on. Not familiar with that. Um, let's tell you, Scott, you guys. Hold on just a second. Michael Lewis in the house. Right on. Um, I was going to start with something I thought was kind of funny. Just a real Tom Major from Maryland. Now, I'm not on Rumble, Jeremy. It's just the uh, – I, I, I can't stand I can't see the comments on it. It just drives me crazy. So uh, I'm just not on it. it I, I, at some point, I'll just go to Rumble only live streams. I just uh, I haven't done it yet. I, I need to. Um, but I, I wish. Uh, but I, once Rumble, I, once Rumble works better, I'll I'll do it. But right now, I'm not on there. Um, all these days, all these days. All right. So uh, Ray in the house. Oh, back in New Jersey, says Mark. Right on, man. Uh, why doesn't your 401k statement show dividends? Eh, it might. I mean, I think it'll show activity. Say my name, Josh. Pooping while standing. All right. Just it. Uh, yeah, your 401k is kind of shit, so the statements. It'll show activity, and, and that will show the dividends it pays out. So, yeah, I think it does. All right. Um, I just want to share with you something real quick just to get uh, – yeah, I agree, uh, Jeremy. I mean, I like I like Rumble a lot. I'm, I'm on Rumble probably almost as much as YouTube now. Yep, Rumble really screwed up, Jeremy. You got the Rumble app. I uh, I've just seen as of last night. I said, "What the hell is going on here?" So I was like, "Look on the Rumble app." All right, and so then uh, we're gonna go to uh, some of my subscriptions. All right, so I go to my subscriptions. I click on my subscriptions and I get this right here. There's Viva Frey and I get that. So it, it used to be able to see the videos there. Now I can't. It's the weirdest thing. So oh, it drives me up the wall. So anyway, so here's some of my sub, you know, subscriptions. There's Viva Frey. So okay, what's this he got for a new video? And it used to be able to see it right there. But now it just says email frequency. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's uh it's the weirdest thing, man. I don't understand why I was doing that. All my subscriptions. So now I got to go to my uh, the main page right here, and you'll see all this stuff on the front, on the top, going back to forth like that. But I, I, that's not what I want. I don't want all that. I want uh, I want to see the subscriptions. Anyway, I'm not sure what the hell's going on in Rumble. It's getting on my nerves, though. Getting on my nerves. So that's weird. So now I got to literally type in the uh, – the people you know, I want to see, I got to type them in, and I uh, I don't like that. So anyway, update the app. Hmm. Dude, 
Okay. I think about that. How do you, how, I mean, I never, how do you, how do you do that, Ray? Update the app. We got to delete it and bring it back on. I don't even see a way to update it. Sending stuff over to the Senate. Is Nancy Pelosi the, I mean, in, in DC, there's a bunch of dumb people. Was Nancy Pelosi the dumbest person there is? Who's dumber, Kamala or Nancy? I'm not sure how to update the app. Maybe uh, I'll figure that out. All right. Not familiar with Rumble. Oh, man. Come on. Uh, here from Hungary. All right. Hey, what's going on out there, man? What's going on in Hungary? Cheers. Say, uh, say hi to Orban for me. Oh, you sorry. I do have the Rumble app. 99% of the videos I watch on my phone, me too. That's what I'm saying, though. I, I don't watch hardly any videos, but it's like with Rumble now, I can't see the, the subscriptions I'm subscribed to. They don't show. I mean, here's, here's a, I don't get it. Why? It's the weirdest thing, man. Very odd. It just shows email frequency. It doesn't show. The videos. Right, there must be a thing going on. Maybe I'll have to send them an email. Say, what the hell's going on? All right. Um, yeah. Right on. About two miles from Walt Whitman. Right on, man. So you got the Ben Franklin and Walt Whitman. So you're in, down there in uh, even more southern Jersey. Right on. Um, yeah, I don't see the Fed. I mean, look, the Fed raises seven. Uh, I see. All right. Here's, here's the thing. The Fed, I don't, they're not going to be able to beat inflation. They don't beat inflation. It's just, it's the whole thing is just silly that people think, oh, the Fed is raising us, going to beat inflation. With that said, can the Fed cause a recession? I don't, I, I don't see that necessarily either. I, I just don't. The re, I, I suppose, I don't know. I don't think so. You can't have it both ways. Me, I'm talking about me now. I can't say the Fed, because I've been thinking about this a lot. The Fed doesn't, can't beat inflation but the Fed can cause a recession. That, that's that's not consistent, in my opinion. Because you're saying, well, they can't beat inflation, but they could put the economy on its back by raising interest rates. The reason they can't, you know, they can't uh, beat inflation is because it never has worked. Now, people use Volcker in 1982 as an example. They were raising rates freaking uh, for the previous 10 years before that. And it, it didn't whip inflation now. It didn't win. So it just happened to be that that time it did. Why? Was it because Volcker? Or was it just because something magically happened with the less regulation, which is what I attributed to, starting under Carter, by the way. But then you can't turn around and say, okay, but if the Fed raises seven times, that's going to cause a recession. I actually think the recession is already here. Obviously, it's not. I mean, we're you you always could be in a recession. Remember, recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. That's it. All right. So could we be in a recession now? Sure. But it's, it, we don't know because it has to be two consecutive quarters. And the last quarter was not recessionary. It was growth. So this quarter is recessionary. It still takes another quarter to make it a recession, if that makes sense. Again, that's just a, uh, a decline in gross domestic product. Um, I actually think it's coming, what I'm saying. I don't think it has anything to do with the Fed. I just think the uh, economic stuff is is bad out there. And I don't think anyone should, you know, freaking scream bloody murder and you know go jump off a bridge. It's just it happens. Um, hey, right on, man. Um, and I, I wish that weren't the case, but you know, recessions happen. It's just, it happens in command control economies, you know, Stalin, North Korea it happens in, uh, fascist economies like the United States. I know that ticks a lot of people off when I say it's fascist. Look at what fascism truly is. It's freaking big government and big business with a little bit of big labor, um, thrown in there. It's, and the, I, I don't know how else you can look at big pharma and not declare this as a fascist state, man. And that, that doesn't mean there's Jack Booty thugs and, you know, freaking whips and chains and Hitler coming. It doesn't mean anything. That it just means from an economic perspective, this is not capitalist in the true nature we think about it. It's, it's somewhat still entrepreneurial, I, which is why I love America. Um, but it's not, it's certainly more fascistic than it is capitalistic, if that makes sense. And I, I, I know people say, ah, you're, you, uh, whatever. I, I, you know, whatever. People think what they want to think. Um, yeah, I might have to update the app. app uh, yeah, so before I forget, I just want to share this. I saw this today and that kind of crapped me up a little bit. Um, <laughs> this will confirm what they say that I'm a Russian stooge. How vaccination status might predict views on Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, I don't know who Grant LaFleche is. 
I don't know, you know, I can't get it, but it's unvaccinated Canadians are about 12 times more likely than those who received three doses to believe Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine was justified, according to a new survey. The poll found that 26%, uh, yeah, the poll found that 26% of those who identified as unvaxxed, your old buddy Josh, agreed that the Russian invasion is justified with another 35% not offering an opinion. This compared to only 2% of surveyed Canadians who said they had three doses of the COVID who supported the attack. Now, I mean, see, that's a stupid question. I don't support the attack, and I don't support the invasion either. To say, do you support the attack is just dumb. I would say I certainly don't support the U.S. propaganda war against it, and I certainly don't support the U.S. puppet regime there. But to say you support inherently you support the attack, uh, attack that's a false dichotomy. It's just it's just trying to make the the – they're trying to make the, the uh, anti-vaxxers, they're just, look, I guarantee if you actually read the the, uh, the the question, it would not say, do you support the attack? I guarantee you say something along the lines that the media can twist it to make the, us the crazy anti-vaxxers look crazy. Like, we get it, man. It's, it's all about minorities. Uh, they're trying to say, oh, my goodness, those crazy minorities, not only are they unvaxxed, but they support Putin. The vast majority of Canadians don't. Uh, it's, it's, you should see... Uh, Canada kiss my butt, man. That's all I got to say. There's a good people in Canada, 100%, but it's not that many anymore. Um, I don't get all these people trying to flee to these countries, uh, escape from the U.S. U.S. is the last bastion of freedom, man. Escape to Sweden. Look, Sweden did great under COVID, but they still were pretty heavy on vax, pretty heavy handed on vax. Why would you want to escape the United States? Doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, bonjour, said Felipe. LeBlanc, right on. All right, cool. Maynard, Texas, had his one-on-one with Jay O today about Medicare stuff. A very smart guy. Right on, man. I guess some more New Jersey. Yeah, anyway, I, I don't expect the Fed to raise rates just because I don't think the economy is going to be burning hotly enough for them to say, oh, we're going to whip inflation out by raising rates. I, I mean, I absolutely could be wrong. I don't know. Um, back is in the house. Right on. All right, my man Chicken Charlie says, in a variable annuity, where do the dividends go? In a regular mutual fund each quarter, I see the dividend in my brokerage account. Yeah, so variable annuity, the, the dividends just go back into the uh, the investments. They're never going to show activity in a variable annuity like they would in a 401k. So a 401k, because they're mutual funds and ETFs, you will see an, an activity. I, well, I shouldn't say never. I don't expect that to be seen in a variable annuity. I just don't. They're going to say, hey, you know, your account, I, I actually, Frank, I, I, it's been so long since I looked at a variable annuity statement. I'm just trying to think. Your account was two hundred thousand. Now it's two hundred five thousand. Yeah, these fees. But actually, I don't. Uh, I don't know if they show activity on a dividend and capital gain. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, but they'll reinvest it um, into the uh, the funds inside the VA, the variable annuity. Yeah. So both check. Both came on your, your subscribe where you actually click on the videos. All right, so maybe it is my app then. All right, good. I didn't know you had to update the apps. I thought it automatically did. Maybe I gotta. I mean, you gotta un, you know delete it and redo it again, or just go to the app. Well, what are you gonna do here? Hold on just a second. All right, hold on just a second, amigos. Let's get ready to rumble. All right, we'll have to figure this one out later. Weird, man. All right, we'll figure it out. Just one other thing here. General. That's it. Maybe I'll just delete it and come back on. All right. Uh, all right, William says, if you're on retirement living on cash for a few years, should you take from your IRA to match the standard deduction value? Um, yeah, one hundred percent, William. I, I, that makes sense to me, without question. <laughs> Tom says Nancy has a nice. <laughs> She's like ninety years old, man. Jeez. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, there you go. Tom's from Maryland, and so isn't Nancy Pelosi. Wasn't her dad the mayor of Baltimore? Baltimore. Um, yeah, so William says, you know, if you're living off cash, did you take some IRA money out to eat your, equal your standard deduction? Yeah, that makes sense, 100%. All right. Oh, man, Adam's helping with a refugee situation. Right on. 
Big election, Hungary on April 3rd. Did not know that. Yeah, Shane says, thanks for the uh, great info. You're welcome. We got, uh, oh, I got some. Right. My employer has retirement options for health care. Obviously, looking at cost and options available. Anything else I should consider? Uh, not, I mean, my employer has retirement options for health care. Obviously, looking at costs and options available. Anything else I should consider? I, not that I can, I mean, you can, you got to consider what they cost relative to what you can get outside your employer is the only way I'd look at it. <laughs> Ray says, I would never thought Pelosi had a gun rack. Does she have a pickup track too? Oh my goodness. Uh, that's funny. Uh, I mentioned by Berkshire as an alternative the. I mentioned buying Berkshire Hathaway as an alternate to Wellington. Um, I guess. I mean, Berkshire's got a bunch of cash. I, I get no qualm with that. But, um, yeah, I guess I can see that. I don't know if I you – know, I, 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 I probably did mention that just because Berkshire has a bunch of cash. I, I, I wouldn't do it. Wellington, the nice thing about Wellington is they actually buy stocks that pay dividends, and uh, Berkshire doesn't. And I'm not sure that Warren Buffett is big on dividends. So uh, I, I think I, would, uh, I wouldn't I would buy Berkshire in, in, uh, in lieu of Wellington. No way. Um, I saw today that Vanguard is being sued. Yeah, I saw that too, man. That, uh, I, uh, <laughs> Vanguard is being sued over the one their target day funds are playing all the, paying all the capital gain stuff. Uh, that was that guy, Rob Berger, whatever his name is. He did a pretty good video on that. Now, off the top of my mind, I can't remember exactly what happened, but uh, it didn't seem disingenuous or nefarious to me. It didn't, but maybe it was. But it seemed like that guy said, uh, I forgot what it was. Oh, baby. But I, I saw that video by Rob or Bob Berger, and he uh, he did a pretty good breakdown of that a couple weeks ago. But I, I didn't get the impression of anything nefarious there, but maybe I'm mistaken something. Fascism destroyed the German war machine ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's yeah, just sad. I mean, everyone's <laughs> what I'm saying. And uh, and communism destroyed the uh, the Soviet war machine and ultimately will destroy the Chinese war machine too. But I'm still trying to think how many countries has China invaded? Not too many. Um, and yet here we are. This is what ticks me off. I'm not gonna lie to you. Everyone's like, Look, I get it. When the red, white, and blue comes, you're happy if you're in a freaking foreign land and you're a strain or you're in a land that's, uh, you know, um, you know, Ho Chi Minh, not Ho Chi Minh, well, Ho Chi Minh, but Pol Pot is breathing down your door. You're happy to see the red, white, and blue. I get that 100%. We don't have the manpower, the resources to do this. Though. That's the problem, man. And we just, because what happens is we start, you know, getting involved in this stuff. And next thing you know, what used to be advisors becomes full on units of artillery, of infantry, you know, of cavalry and the whole thing. And, and now we're like, I don't get it. Now, one, one guy did say, and I thought this was a good counterpoint to uh, if we sent, and I don't want to do it, but if we sent planes to uh, uh, to Ukraine, he said, well, uh, the Russians were funding the Vietnam, Vietnam, the Northern Vietnamese. They were literally funding them, and we had boots on the ground in Vietnam, and that didn't start a World War III with Russia. Like, pretty close, though, but you know, that was this guy's argument. He's like, just because we send anti-tank or anti-aircraft and airplanes to keep the no-fly zone doesn't mean it has to be World War III. And that's, that's actually a good point. And his example was we Russia literally funded the VC, and, uh, and that did not start a hot war between us and Russia. I'd rather not get that close, frankly. And I, I just, I don't know what this whole need to support the Zelensky regime is. I just don't get it, man. It's weird to me. That guy's a clown. I, I, I don't like the guy. I'm not going to lie to you. And the fact that all these people who are pro-Americans don't see what the hell is happening, which is the loss of sovereignty by joining the EU. And yet somehow Zelensky is going to be a sovereign governor of the Ukraine, even though right, all he's doing right now is trying to consolidate the media. Out listen to one. He's banning political parties. Uh, he's pissing off the Israelis. I just I'd love to see what Bill Crystal and the neocon Warhawks uh, say about that because you know that's uh you can't be pissing off the Israelis, man. The neocons will freaking just share, you know scream at you. I guess Zelensky can though. It's kind of strange. What Whoopi Goldberg has to say about that? Um, 
All right, so my man pooping while standing makes the ultimate mistake here. All right, so he says, by the way, I've done the portfolio visualizer looking at Berkshire versus Wellington, and Berkshire B, because it's two classes, is, is far and away better. Is. We don't know that will be. I cannot stress enough. I know he. I'm, I'm just picking on. But just because it has done doesn't mean it will. I cannot. Like everyone says, the market's always come back. In fact, Jill has sent me a good story on that. I don't think I have it up here. Uh, talking about, I'll do a video on it tomorrow because this is. Uh, man, let me find that real quick. One second. I'm gonna find this article. Bear with me. I don't even know what the markets did. Did the markets uh, go down or up today? I'm predicting uh, well, down. All right, so Dow was down 200. S&P was down uh, less than two points. Wow, big deal. All right, right here. Here's uh, Jill had sent me this today. All right, let's check this out. Dave Casper. You know what Dave Casper's... Uh, Nickname is anyone want to guess? The ghost, just like Dave Casper, who's played for the Raiders, number 87. All right, so let's see if we can't see what this article is. Why are you rapping over there, big boy? Big boy, All right, there we go. Finally, good night. Good night. Sleep tight. Isn't that weird how some Bibles, so two or more for, for Matthew 18, 20, and some say two or three gathered. Um, I, I've always understood to be two or more. And I'm looking at all the Bibles I have in my house. I got a bunch and all says two or three. And I always thought Matthew 18, 20 was two or more gathered. Well, let me just read it to you if I have my reading spectacles, which I do. So here's Matthew 18, 20. All right. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. I just find that interesting. And yet I, I never, so someone pointed out to me, and now it says two or three. I said, really? I always thought it was two or more. I could have sworn it always said two or more. And so many of you thought the same. And then some of you guys look at your Bible, and some guy even looked back at Bible from like 1950. I said, wow, that's nuts. My, uh, we got some Russian, oh, that must show that I'm a Putin stooge. My, uh, my wife's dad was fluent in Russia, Chi Chinese, man um, Mandarin. Uh, he was fluent in Italian and German. Anyway, long story, my, my wife's mom was fluent in Chinese too. Anyway, uh, so we got some Bibles upstairs that were in Russian, you know, from you know, back in the fifties and sixties. It'd be interesting to see uh, what those said. I just got to find them. But isn't that weird? It's like, why do we always think it was two or more and not two or three? How did it two or three? It's just I found it interesting. I don't think, again, I don't know what to make it. I just find that weird. We always thought it was two or more. All right, so let's take a look. Um, I'm going to share this guy with you. This is an opinion piece from uh, Market Watch. Mark Holber. Now, I like Mark Holber. Mark Holbert's, uh, I'm a fan of this guy. So, this would not be fear porn like the crap I uh, talked about earlier today because Mark's been around for a while, and uh, he's a good guy, man. I mean, I don't know if he's a good guy. He might be up to no good in his personal life. I don't know. I'm just saying I like uh, – he, he's in a fear porn pusher in any stretch. He's actually well thought out and well received. Uh, the stock market doesn't necessarily produce handsome returns uh, over time. Well, okay, that's – okay, handsome. What's define a handsome, Mark? You know, I haven't read the article. I just uh, – but the March 2000 NASDAQ top is a harsh reminder that the long run isn't always your friend, 100%. Let's just see what he says here. Um, all right. The NASDAQ component uh, was closed at March 10th, 2000 at 5,048. Remember that? I think it was yesterday. By October 2002, it was down to 11,114, a decline of 78%. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, uh, it took until... Tooth, okay, in the chart above, it took until March 2020 for the NASDAQ adjusted for inflation to get uh, back to where it was on March 10th, 2000. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Wow, look at that. Adjusted for inflation. And you really probably need to do that, 
In a chart above, it took until March 2020, two decades after its peak, for the NASDAQ to get was still lower than where it's been at the top. That teaches a valuable investment lesson. The stock market doesn't always produce handsome returns, even over peers that may we consider long term. Yep. The uh, NASDAQ has produced an annualized real inflation adjusted return of 1.8% since 2000. Look at that. That's nuts, man. I didn't realize it was that bad. That's nuts. Now, look, you got this doubling basically from freaking 2020 March to the end of 2021, it looks like. And then it's, look, at that's crazy, man. I didn't know it was that bad. Wow. The NASDAQ has produced an annualized return of just 1.8%. That's far lower than the U.S. market's 200-plus average. A two-decade period in which stocks lose ground in inflation is a scary prospect. For those whose retirement financial security is predicated on stocks doing better, 100%. So imagine, imagine an investor in his mid 40s, 20 years prior to expect to retirement. Who follows standard financial planning advice as the bulk of her of his portfolio in equities? What would it mean to him uh, if the portfolio at age 65 is lower in real terms than currently? Let's see. That's the let's see where Mark's making a mistake here is he's talking about the person who's in his 40s and what would it mean to him, you know, 25 years later when it's, or in uh, 20 years later at 65, he's adding money to it, Mark. See, that's the difference here. So the, the difference isn't he's he's 40 years old, he's got 20 years left to work. The difference is he's adding money. This guy right here, if he retired, isn't adding money. If you're not adding money in stack, you're drawing it out, you're in the world of hurt. But if you're adding money to it, it doesn't matter. You're like, okay, I'm just buying, I'm dollar cost averaging. Uh, losing to inflation, according to, I'm familiar with this guy here too. Uh, yeah, at uh, Santa Clara, yep. Uh, the S&P 500 in real terms was no higher in 1984 than it was in 1909. Wow, that's nuts. That's nuts. The, according to this guy, in 1984, the S&P 500 adjusted for inflation was no higher in 1984 than in 1909. Whoa. That's a, well, okay. That's a seventy-five year period in which this benchmark posts a negative real return. Can't stand that guy. I literally, I'm starting to despise that man. I'm trying to think, Klaus Schwab, Sniffy Joe, we got Zelensky. Oh, I just hate when everyone throws in like, yo. It's kind of like how they did with BLM and how they did with uh, Fauci. It's the same thing, man. It's the same thing with Fauci. Oh, Fauci's the sexiest man alive. Zelensky's the sex. I hate that crap. Because you see, it's just this mass psychosis. It's the weirdest thing, man. Uh, all right. To be sure, the 75-year... Oh, well, I mean, all right. Come on, Mark. To be sure, the 75-year period of staying, staying even with inflation is focusing on the price-only version of the S&P 500. Oh. Give me... Hey. Ow. Oh. Which does not take dividends into account. Ow. Oh. Come on, freaking Mark Hulbert. You know better than that. But even when including dividends, that's some weak-ass crap there, Mark. But even when including dividends, it's still the case that the stock market periodically endures extremely long periods of keeping pace with inflation. I, oh, that's weak-ass stuff, pardon my French. Another statistics that really drives home the point uh, of the 229 calendar years since 1793, 44% have occurred in one of the six doldrums identified by Macquarie. But if we're going to use Macquarie and not use dividends, I don't want to use a guy anymore. Ah. Ah. That's freaking frustrating. We got comments on here. Yeah, let's put a comment. How, how do you... You lost me by not including dividends in that 75-year time frame. Come on, man. You know better than that. You know better than that. Right. Okay, I, I should be signed up in here. Uh, anyway, let's see if it allows me to post that. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Come on, Mark Holbert. That's what freaking... Clowns do. They don't include freaking dividends. Yeah. Yeah. That drives me up. I hate when people do that. 
I'm going to dance it out of it. You make me feel, I think I just posted it. Let's see. Oh, now I got to subscribe and continue reading. All right, I'm not gonna do that. So anyway, I'm not sure if I posted my thing or not, but, uh, oh wait, no, won't let me. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. All right. How many people did I lose? Cause I said, I didn't like Zelensky. How many people lost? Anyway, point being is, um, a couple things there. If you're not including dividends, that's just foolish. Uh, that, that I, uh, part two, though, if you always think it's going to come back, that's dumb, too, because you don't know the future. It has. I get it. But it has it if you're pulling money out of the portfolio. Let's go to Portfolio Visualizer, actually. Let's see. We're going to Portfolio Visualizer. And ah, it only goes back to 1985. Um, oh. What was that? Well, let's see here. Yeah. Let's go to Don't Quit Your Don't. Quit your day job. There you go. I think they got a good. Uh, I will tell you a story about a lady I was working with today, a single lady. Um, we got the. Uh, Yeah, what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I love don't quit your J job. If you're not on this website, you're wrong. It's surprisingly hard to find historical market returns on various securities in the indices. Indices, I, I, what I'm saying. Agree completely. So uh, let's see here. Index returns right here. Uh, look at Dow. Look at McKay right here. Yeah, this, these guys are freaking fantastic. How are they making money, man? I don't get it. All right, so we're going to go down here. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, man, can I just put new best dividends, adjust for inflation. Um, result for periods. Hmm. Right, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, hold on just a second. Chart for periods. All right, let me look at my... Uh, Go up to my bookmark. Go to investing. Hold on just a second. You know my name is political calculator. Oh, there we go. Oh, I haven't looked at it. Oh, wait. All right, good. Political calculations. Hold on just a second. Ah, I haven't been to political calculations in a while. Oh, man, I forgot all about this. Ooh, yeah. Sweet. All right. Guys, there we go. All right. So let's share you guys. It's called political calculations dot blogspot dot com. Uh, S&P 500 at your uh, fingertips right here. So we're going to go back from 19. Uh, we'll go back from what do you say? 19. Uh, what do you say? 19. 26. We'll try that. Now let's go to 1930. 29. 1929. One second. 1929. Right there. All right. And then we're going to end in 1984. Right at the end of 84. I'm just picking these numbers out of the air. So 1984 right there. All right. S&P 500 calculate all right so let's see calculate returns without dividend reinvestment see this is what's so freaking stupid man i hope y'all can see this 3.44 percent without dividends reinvested and what was inflation 3.3 so you made 10 basis points well i mean it's just it's not to use dividends is that's just dumb and yet if you had dividends reinvested you more than doubled your rate of return hey so your real return with dividends reinvested was 5% a year. That's net of inflation. I just, I mean, come on, Mark Holbert. That's nah, stupid. All right, so let's go now to, uh, that's in 1984. Let's go end in 1982. Let me do what I got to do up here. 1982. Let me start in 1982 right there. All right, so right here again, 
eight percent without dividends with dividends three percent without and that's net of inflation um that's before inflation right here negative without dividends reinvested right here from 1929 to 1982 negative without dividends so i could do a I, you know i could do a uh a video tomorrow said if you invest in the s p 500 from 1929 to 1982 you lost money but that'd be dumb because if you invest in the s p 500 for that many years and did not reinvest your dividends uh, that's just a stupid way to invest no other way around that and again that assumes you uh um, are taking money out or are not adding to it. And, but, you know, you shouldn't do that. You should reinvest dividends for sure. All right, so we got reinvesting dividends 4.44. But I, what I want to do is I want to go to 1929 to 1954. If memory serves, this was the, uh, when it finally came back, was in 1954. This is, I'm talking, that's the, this is the S&P 500. It's not the Dow, but. Yeah, well, same kind of thing here. Index without dividend reinvestment, uh, one, negative 1. 1.7, with dividend reinvestment, 4%. So all these idiots out there say, oh, no, uh, you you lost money. You said, did you add the dividends back in? Another reason why I can't stand index annuities, by the way, uh, because they use point, pro, uh, point to point. They don't reinvest dividends. And it's just dumb not to reinvest dividends. That's all there is to it. All right. So po uh, political calculations, big fan. Um, I'm not sure how these guys are making money either, to be honest with you. It's nuts. They got recent post paying off your loan early, um, the 2006. But they've been, they got post. Um, it's weird, actually. Political calculation. Hey, pay off your loan early. And you can kind of go there. Um, that's good stuff. All right. All right. Let's see what else. Thought police do desire to change every man's name to Winston, 100%. We got Matt, all right? Matt, what happened to all the U.S. workers? There's a radio guy saying the ski lift was closed but could not have workers. Yeah, man, I, I, don't, um, I don't know what to make of that. I, uh, I don't know what to make of it, man. That's uh, very interesting because you know, back in the day when I was growing up, people would kill for a job. Kill but you know what I'm saying. Now it's like, yeah, I mean, so like, do I still run off the stimulus money? I, I don't get it, man. I mean, there's still a big demand for housing, so it's not like they're all living in grandma's house. I, I don't know what's going on. And no one really does. Um, I just think, actually, I, I have a sneaky suspicion we're starting to see the demographic bomb in our very eyes. we got more people engaging in the, um, hospitality you know, a vacation, and whatnot, and less and less people able to uh, support the vacationers, if that makes sense. Um, and we've been predicting something like this for a while that the older people, the baby boomers, are going to be such a big generation um, that uh, there's not going to be enough people to support them. Uh, and, to, and I'm not talking financial; I'm just talking about at the restaurants, at the uh, ski lifts, and whatnot. It's interesting. That's a demographic boom, a demographic bomb. And it's not inflationary. I'm just telling you right now. That's deflationary. It's just all there is to it. And it's going to continue to get worse because no one's having babies. Your old buddy Josh had four. And I'll be freaking doggone if one of my grandkids, uh, they better have, each have at least two kids per. I'll tell you that right now. If they don't, they're out of the will. They're out of the will. I was reading about, uh, so we went to see the New Orleans Pelicans last night at the NBA. I said, who's the owner of the Pelicans? Because it's weird. They had this kind of beefy guy. Um, not a very good attractive guy, but he had a smoking hot lady with him. I said, I wonder if that's the owner. And he was, you know, it's my age probably. And I said, she just, they, she looked out of his league. So I said, I bet it's a rich guy who's the owner. So I looked up the Pelicans, and they were sitting right behind the bench too. And uh, I looked up the Pelicans. It's owned by, uh, I forgot her name, Gail Benson. Gail Benson, which is, you remember Tom Benson with a little freaking umbrella, that weird guy? Uh, he, he was... <laughs> Anyway, so he, uh, his third wife was Gail. Her th third husband was Tom. And uh, she used to be a secretary before she had an intern in, uh, internal design. I'm not in, in her, internal design, whatever it's called. Anyway, a firm that was, I don't know, long story short, somehow she was able to get uh, set up with Tom Benson, uh, the billionaire owner of the New Orleans Saints and the New Orleans Pelicans. Anyway, long story short, um, somehow Tom Benson he just died in 2018, three years before he died or something like that. He sent an email to his daughter and grandkids that he was taking them out of. Wait one second. 
Yo, 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 ma. I'm doing a live stream right now. Uh, Liam's downstairs. Oh, okay. I think Kevin's upstairs. You want to say hi to everybody on the? No. no. I'm sorry. Text me when you're done. All right. Love you. What time is it down there? Same. Oh. oh, it is? Okay. Oh, there's Pablo. He wants to say hello to the baby. Hi, Pablo. Oh. All right, I'm going to get back to the live stream. Love you. I'll text you later. Okay. All right. Love you, bye. Bye. Uh, that's my wife. She's in uh, Key West or something like that down there in Florida with my oldest. Anyway, so Tom Benson emailed his daughter saying, I'm taking out the will and uh, and, your, and the grandkids too. And Gail Benson got the whole thing. And, then, of course, the daughter, and I don't know what the hell the situation was with Tom Benson's daughter. But they sued, you know, they went to, uh, the, you know, they, they challenged the estate. And uh, because the will didn't rec- uh, say that, it was just an email. And apparently uh, the courts found on behalf of Tom Benson, or at least Gail Benson, at his death. Isn't that crazy? Does the email suffice as uh, basically disinheriting the daughter? I said, man, freaking nuts. I don't know why I'm telling that story. But uh, I don't know where their story came from. All right. Uh, oh, about having kids and grandkids, I guess. Michael Pisano says, if I take Social Security at 62, my wife wants to take it at 67. If something happens to her prior to that, do I collect Social Security, which is the higher amount? So I'm assuming something happens to her being her, her dead. You have the option of what to take uh, for survivor benefits. So basically, you'd, you'd tell Social Security, hey. I want to, I mean, you, you, you just, you have to crunch the numbers. You see, you tell social security, I want to take mine, continue to take mine or take my survivor benefit, whichever is going to work better in the long run. So remember, you can take a survivor benefit um, and allow your own benefit to grow. Uh, you can absolutely do that. What I'm saying. And a lot of widows don't do that. It's too bad. Um, or you can continue to take your benefit and that way, your survivor benefit won't be reduced because you took it before full retirement age. Clear as mud, I get it. But just remember, there's two different benefits there. Your own retirement benefit and your survivor benefit, which was your wife's retirement benefit. Uh, so I was uh, working with a lady today, and a uh, nice lady. And uh, she says, um, uh, very nice. I enjoyed our conversation a lot. Um, and she goes, I just completely knew this as basically, you know, ca- you know sh- canned. Uh, last year, you know, they've been wanting to can uh, some of the producers on their team for a while because they got some fancy schmancy good time rock and roll guy from New York State, and he was going to, you know, solve the problems of the, of the company she worked at. You know, the guy's a con. Anyway, long story short, uh, she knew she was short time, and then uh, she got severed. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, they gave her six months, but she got severed. And she goes, I didn't pay any attention to any of this, Josh. And you know, sometimes I, I don't even follow what you're saying. I said, oh, man, I've got to hear that. That way I need to even bring it down a little bit. So if, if I'm confusing people on some of the stuff, I apologize. I, my whole point was to target people um, who, uh, who who I, I want to make sure that people who who don't know that much don't feel intimidated to ask questions about financial planning, if that makes sense. Anyway, so she um, she emailed me before our call. She goes, I think I did something stupid. Remember, she just got severed. She's single. All right. And um, and there's no guy in the equation whatsoever. No surviving spouse, anything like that. No kids, no nothing. Anyway, so she goes, I think I made a mistake. I just moved. And she only has, you know, 400,000 bucks. I think it's 400,000 bucks. She had 430 and it fell to 400. And she said she made a mistake. She moved a half into cash. And I said, you know, Maureen, whatever her name was. And I know her name. I'm just using that for example. So Maureen, that's quite all right. Because she is actually 65, and she is going to wait till she's 70 to take her Social Security. Initially, I said, why don't you take a 67? You're single. Well, it turns out both her parents lived into their 90s. I said, oh, that's not a bad idea to take a 70. So in this case, she needs, you know, she's basically living off 50000 bucks a year. She's going to wait till she's 70 to take Social Security. I say, like, Maureen, you got 200000 bucks in cash. That's the barbell right there. That's the barbell. 50000 a year from your cash. You know what I'm saying? And the other 200,000 bucks is uh, invested in, uh, I forgot how it was invested, but anyway, you know, Target 2030 fund or something like that. I can't remember. Um, I said, man, it's perfect. Anyway, she's all nervous. She's like, I think I made a mistake. And I said, no, 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 no. 
cash is king. Cash is king. And then when Social Security kicks in, well, they'll basically cover her expenses for the most part. Anyway, so that, uh, I don't know why I went off on that tangent. Oh, right there. Uh, Bar yeah, I like Barnes. Barnes reminds me of uh, a populist guy on the right that I like a lot. Big fan. Uh, Barnes and Frey had a, lo a great – and I, I support them on Locals, by the way. I need to get back on Locals more. I haven't been posting anything on Locals. Um, <laughs> Barnes and Frey, Viva Frey, David, had a great breakdown last time. Ukraine occupation, historical aspect of why we should be concerned about intervening. It's available on YouTube. Wow. All right. Good. Um, yeah, we should we should keep our uh, what was that old song? Keep your hands to yourself. You know that stupid song. Uh, no, tell me no lies and keep your hands to yourself. That was actually a pretty good song. Oh, the eighties rock sucked. Right. Yeah, Rob Berger. Yeah, my man pooping while standing. Said it twice now. Um, he says, Thank, I have four years cash. So I want to go for more growth. Yeah, 100%, man. I mean, I look, if you're trying to get more growth, uh, Berkshire would be where you're shooting for. I, I got no qualm with that. I'm just saying, um, you know, just because I'm just nitpicking on you, man. I'm, you know, at the end of the day, who knows what we'll do better? I don't know, but I just, you know, the it, it's like, what's the meaning of is? You know, that kind of thing is when people say it, it, uh, it, it is better or I always say, no, no, change that. It has uh, Doug Casparitis. Remember Casparitis used to play for the Islanders. He was a capital killer for the Islanders. Boy, cheated Casparitis. Urgh. My employer offer options in retirement too. My experience is that if you pick a Medicare Advantage is to determine doctor network availability if you travel. Um, uh, yes, I'm not sure. Okay. I, oh, yeah. I think he's talking about, uh, Robert Barnes. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of, of Medicare Advantage Part C. I, I would like original Medicare if you are going to travel. Um, remember Medicare Advantage is based in HMO. Um, I don't, like, I don't know if there's PPO Medicare Advantages. My understanding is probably not. It seems like the, uh, an HMO, which is why the costs are cheap. But if you're doing any traveling, you know, original Medicare, your um, your supplemental policies, you know, Part G and F, and I don't do they even offer F anymore. G and N, I think. I don't think they offer F anymore. G and N. Um, anyone, any doc who accepts Medicare patients, you are in network for. If that makes sense. Um, Tom Majors, Tom. I mean, Tom Brunning says, "What happens to an annuity in an IRA?" When RMDs exceed monthly annuity payout, yeah, that's uh, the annuity. I can't imagine any annuity anymore. There were some back in the old, way old days that uh, they would penalize you for exceeding uh, your annuity uh, withdrawal amounts. Now they don't do that anymore. So basically, if you look, I, I, I shouldn't say now they don't. I, I should say I would be stunned if there's an annuity contract issued in the last 25 years that says, if you exceed more than your uh, annuity amount via because of RMDs, we're going to penalize you. I bet that doesn't happen. So it's basically you get 10% distribution free of 10% uh, surrender charge or RMDs, whichever is more RMDs or the 10%. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I kind of thought that was weird, too. I, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Denise, did he own that fund itself? Um, yeah, there you go. Um, I'm not, I, I was, I thought the same thing is why is he so mad? At, I mean, yeah, I was surprised that if I said, I actually, I can't remember. Did he actually own that fund, the Vanguard fund? China invaded North Korea to attack U.S. forces during the Korean war. Yeah, and we didn't, uh, uh, make China, but I, I, you know, I, I okay. I, I, I agree with that 100%. You know, we didn't have a hot war with China, hot war with uh, Russia, pretty doggone close though. And at the end of the day, um, you know, given that Sniffy Joe is called Putin a war criminal, uh, th this we let's I tell you what, let's let's try for no war. I mean, I still don't understand people like so. I said, Well, it's weird that no one cares about Ethiopia, you know, 500,000 people died in the civil war there. You know, it's a, horrible things going on everywhere. You know, what, what are you supposed to do? I mean, just what, what the hell? What are we supposed to do? And the answer, of course, will be we should send um, planes. <laughs> To establish no fly zone. 
I, I can't believe people don't see what that logic is. I'm like, you recognize now this is beginning of a hard war. Well, it wasn't in Vietnam. Okay, it does mean it won't be here. And on top of that, why should we spend, oh, who's flying these planes? Ukrainians? Whose money is it? Oh, right. Our money, because a war machine never stops, and it loves the profits of making more planes. So we're going to pay Boeing to make a plane that's going to be used in Ukraine by Ukrainian pilots who don't know their head from a hole in the ground. They're going to get shot down. Or are we going to enforce the no-fly zone ourselves with NATO and American pilots? What are you, freaking crazy? I didn't like that when Clinton went to Bosnia, that thing. I, I was against that back then, too. I said, we should be taking you know, command of UN blue hats? Hell no. Hell no. I don't like it then. I don't like it now. And I, you know, after, you know, I've lost my conservative street cred. Um, I don't like George W. Bush's wars either, even though I support him like a freaking madman because I did the same thing as people do on my channel. Well, if Putin takes Ukraine, what next? What next? He's coming for us eventually. I said, that's why I said the same thing. If we don't go over there in Afghanistan and get those goat, goat herders, they're going to be coming here. And yet the border, just come on in, boys. It's crazy. And at some point, you just can't stop the world from being the world. You can't. We don't have the money. We don't have the, We don't have people who can run a freaking a ski lift in wherever that guy was, Vermont. And we're going to have freaking people sending the whole thing. But it's just a, because wars are profitable, 100%. But you know what it is? You know what ultimate is? Is to protect assets, i.e. assets of... The people who got rich off Ukraine, the pillage of Ukraine, the Bidens, the Mitt Romneys, the uh, Pelosi's. There's another guy, too, another Republican. I can only imagine Lindsey Graham, John McCain. I can only imagine they got scratch. It's no different than, uh, was it Mark? What was it? Was McAuliffe or Warner, both of them, who got rich off the plights of Haitians because they're stupid cell phones. You might not remember this. I remember like it was yesterday. The Clinton Foundation basically raped Haiti. And gave all their profits on long distance cell phone service, not cell phone, long distance calling uh, to Americans. Terry McAuliffe, if memory serves, Mark Warner, if memory serves, I think it was Warner. And I think McAuliffe has something to do with it too. They got rich, rich, just taking advantage of Haiti. And Haiti's worse off than it was before Clinton got involved. And Aristide, who Clinton wanted to keep in off and keep as a president, um, I forgot he uh, he got. He got run out of town and Clinton wanted to basically force him onto uh, the Haitian people because Aristide was just like Zelensky. Is. He was the American puppet. That, the whole thing is insane. And you're sitting there thinking, and they all, they all have an excuse. You know, we got to stop the, you know, the Ukrainians from being slaughtered. I'm like, well, Zelensky could do that in two seconds flat. You know what I'm saying? But he's the one who pursued NATO and EU. Crazy. I just find it funny too. We got to protect the sovereignty of, of Ukraine. So I'm going to go into EU. And EU, the minute you are a part of EU, your solitary is gone. Solitary. That's why the UK got rid of it. That's why France hopefully will too at some point say, the hell, we've lost our ability to police up our own borders of you in terms of how, you, how big you can grow a cucumber. You know, how much gallons per flush you can have on your toilet. The EU from Brussels determines that. Nuts. Oh, okay. Andrew says uh, Rob Berger didn't own the fund. He's just reporting it right on, man. What do you mean we don't have the money? We are offering amazing relocation. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, man. If I look, if I mean, not in some way, if these guys, these, you know, Joe Biden, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. And all these guys saying Joe Biden, he's going to take care of blacks and all this stuff. You know, I just, it's, I just, you gotta look, man, you're voting for, it's your fault. You voted for these people. But at some point you gotta say, when are you guys going to realize these people don't, we're going to send all this money to, you know, I don't think we should send I mean, we don't have the money. We're going to send all this money all over this, the world, all overseas. And yet, you know, some people voted for Biden under the assumption there's going to be some kind of reparations or something like that. And it never is going to come. And yet all that money that could have gone to, and I wouldn't give it to blacks. I'd give it to small business. I mean, there's no money to give. There is, there's no money. But I mean, if anything, you don't send it to Ukraine. You send it here to people who've been put out because of the stupidity of the COVID stuff. Howdy. Howdy duty.
Rob said the capital gains are 40 times normal for those target day funds. Yeah, I got it, Andrew. Parallel Bible's all different, but my my wonder is we all remember it. Most I, I can almost guarantee you if we did a survey, and I won't, but the vast majority of people remember it as when two or more are gathered, I'm in their presence, basically. But you look at it, it's actually two or three. It's just weird to me. I find that uh that's weird. Mike Weiss in the house. Yeah. Rumor has it, Pablo may make a special appearance. He did, he did. Two or three, you need two or three witnesses to put someone to death coincidence. You need two or three witnesses. I'm not following your, I'm not following you, Linda. Would it, you need two or three. No, I'm not following what you mean here. Um, saving money for the younglings, I should probably just invest underlying ETF sector amounts. Oh yeah, my yeah, that guy, the porn lawyer. Yep, yep. There's a good blog post on the misquote the verse in Matthew. Yeah. Um, I guess you can't put the link, can you? Or can you? I don't know. Uh, maybe you can. Let's see here. Uh Doug says, "Can I don't have any questions yet. Can I watch anyway? Of course. Yeah. Right. We got uh, poor Pablo. No one likes Pablo. You're not going to hit the like because you don't like Pablo? Right. Right. But Josh, he's comparing today's dollars to yesterday's. It's not Apple. I'm not sure. What I'm, I'm way behind. Oh, right here. Brad says, I like mining coal. There we go. It's more of a guaranteed return than anything else. Yes, yes, yes. One, oh, man. Perfect. All right. So my man says, if I sell my business and pay capital gains, is the profit added to my income and that raise my Medicare rates? Yes. 100%. What am I missing with Zim? Only a 2.3 PE rate. Oh, yeah. That's too good to be true. 100%. I mean, that's a value stock. And that's the thing with value stocks. They're riskier. Could you make money off that puppy? Maybe, but uh, there's a reason why that sucker is trading at a uh, 2.3 price to earnings ratio with a 22.4% dividend yield. 100%. Right. I saw four 20 picking orders at Target yesterday. What's picking orders? Today? I don't know what that means. Marie said she just got her taxes back and she got extra tax credit for the ACA recovery that Congress just passed. All right. What would Dennis says? What would you do with an extra two hundred thousand dollars cash, especially during this volatile market? There's no way to answer that, Dennis. Um, Karen, Kevin says, I think they get Social Security benefit at the age was when the spouse died. You can't say, but they didn't plan. Yeah, see, I'm missing something there. Got change in my pocket. All right, there you go. Got change in my pocket. Okay, here's die fi. Is it true about every seven eight years? If you have money, let's say in the S&P 500, it doubles. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's the rule of 72. And so if you average 10% a year, it would double every seven years. Um, but that's that's happened in the past. <laughs> but it's not. <coughs> well, to be clear, it's not like every seven, eight years is doubled. It's just if you have a historical average rate of return of 10, that would mean it did double every seven, eight years, but that's not how it works because the markets go up and they go down and go up and they go down. So some decades you made no money out of uh, 2000, the, the odds, some decades you made 300%. I, I think, yeah. Th so it, 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 whatever that is three times in the, it, you know, the teens. So it just, it depends, but on average, they doubled every seven to eight years. That's, that's a fact, but you can't say I have 200,000 now. So in seven, eight years, I have 400,000. In seven, eight years, I'll have 800,000. That's not the way it works. I, a lot of people make that mistake. A lot of people do die. Defini, Defini. Yeah. 
I never talk about the saver tax credit. Can make four thousand in retirement, put in your Roth, get the two thousand tax credit, and then take the money out of the Roth. There you go. You just did it. Good job. Good job. Um, uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff was in Key West. Fully recharged batteries. Man, awesome. Yeah, once you read uh, um, various books on the old days of the Jabba's, and then you realize, too, my friends, that it's frustrating. Is is what people want. I mean, it's like you would have thought after the swine flu fiasco of 1986 that we'd never come back to even thinking about mandatory vaccinations. And yet in 1986, uh, literally not even 10 years later, they passed a bill to indemnify the vax companies, the pharmaceutical companies. And then, uh, lo and behold, just like that, we have this plethora of new vaccines out there. It's just insanity. And, the, and the, there's no liability whatsoever against the pharma companies. And um, and I just and yet people still fall for it. And I was thinking, because I was reading my book this morning, I was like, well, now that's what happened with the COVID vaccine. Everyone, most people can recognize the, the, the insanity that was. And I look, I mean, when I say a lot of people don't, I get that. But a lot of people do. A lot of people previously were freaking... If you had said they were, you know, they would have just gone off the top if you said you questioned vaccines. And now they're, you know, they've they've had a, whoa, I don't know, maybe I was wrong, um, which is, you know, it sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. And I started thinking, well, maybe this will get rid of once and for all this mandatory vaccination stuff. And then I started thinking, no, because even after the swine flu stuff, which literally was, a you know, Ford's flu folly, the triple F, Ford's flu folly is a horrific. It's just, it was absolutely atrocious. It's absolutely insanity. And, um, and then 1986, they passed the, the act um, that indemnified the, the uh, big pharma. And, and, you're, and it's just like the Basoli Simpson immigration bill of 1986 when Reagan said this will get rid of illegal immigration. And he was it just, I mean, it did nothing but the, did every, anything but get rid of illegal immigration. Just like George H. W. Bush's tax cut, tax uh, tax increase act, read my lips. He was promised by George Mitchell, who was the Senate Majority Leader from Maine, that for every dollar increase in taxes, they reduce spending by two bucks, and they didn't do it. And you know, and, and he lost his election for that, rightly so. So we have uh, Simpson Masoli. Uh, Reagan was snookered on that. If you sign this amnesty bill, it will get rid of illegal immigration once and for all. You got the George H.W. Bush Tax Increase Act, which I mean, these are devilish people. man. I mean, you know, Satan is in, in involved in this stuff for sure. I mean, they just lie because Satan lies. All right. And then you got um, what's his name? Uh, Henry Waxman, who thought the 1986 act would not do what it did. He he, he did not realize the extent of the indemnification. And uh, it's just it's sad, man. It's uh, it's sad because you're sitting there thinking. Well, at the end of the day, what next? Well, now they're all shielded from any kind of lawsuits. We have crazy illegal immigration. And then we had Clinton, um, you know, the, the third wave. And it's just, you know, at the end of the day, was Clinton better than George H.W. Bush? Maybe. I don't know. But you know, I don't know. actually, let's uh, I want to watch something here real quick. Let's uh, now I'm thinking about it. Hold on just a second here. We're going to watch a video real quick. And. uh I don't think this will be taken down from me. There's Peter Zell Zihan nukes in Ukraine. Oh, I got to watch that. Uh, I don't watch that guy as much. Am I not subscribed on my main channel? Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Hold on. Looks like a light one. Let's uh, hold on. What was that? No, it was, um... All right, hold on a sec. I gotta find this uh this video. Oh, there it is. I know where to go. I think I played this last time. Maybe I did, but there is some cussing in here. So just be advised if little kids are.
going to find this real quick, and then we're going to play it because it's it's uh, it's classic. Because this, this right here, I uh, um, oh man, where is it? Hold on, just a second. I'll find it. Bear with me. Hang tight. Hang tight. Hang tight. Oh, what fun it is to! There we go. All right, sweet. We're gonna show you guys this. And there's some cussing in here, so just be advised. Not for uh, what? What is it called? Not for work. All right, we're gonna watch this. If Satan was honest, I think I played this, or maybe I didn't. Maybe I just played the link, or the uh, shared the link. Well, the majority of blacks don't want to take the vaccine because the CDC like tried to kill them like forty years ago. Oh, how dare you? Here's it. They don't care. My body, my choice. What about they don't care? They don't care about truth. And this is why your little right wing puppets don't matter at all. Don't matter at all. Think about the logic behind it. If they really could just force you, why hasn't that happened? Well, they did in the PS. You don't know the people doing it and why. You don't even know. You weren't there. Where'd you see it? The History Channel on your fucking television? From my life, there's been no force. It's only been, you can't be on YouTube saying this shit. You can't be on this. You can't be on that. No one's tried to force a needle on me. If, if there was a moment of clarity where Satan just wanted to tell you the truth, yeah. he'd go, I don't care about the truth. I care about your behavior. Exactly. I want you to accept spiritual death. And I will say anything in my power to get you to do it. All right, here comes Satan. I will say anything to get you to do anything. I'm going to get you to reject all of your God-given inalienable rights as a living man and woman. And I will use every deception in my power. The one thing I don't have is force. I will never force it on you because then I don't win. So I am going to deceive and scare you in any way I can to get you to choose to do something horrible. But my body, my choice for you, but not me. I don't care. <laughs> I am the great deceiver. I will deceive you into doing something horrifying. Your job is to hold your ground and have your own unmovable ethics and morality so that these tricks do not work. Oops. Not sure what happened. All right. Whatever. So, uh, the point being is Satan doesn't care, he lies. He lies. He does not care. And I mean, I just, I, when I was, and again, I probably shared this before. I don't care. It's, uh, I don't have the book here. C.S. Lewis, you're talking about um, screw tape letters. And you just read the screw tape letters. Satan's whole point is to lie, to trick you. Ah, it's so frustrating that we get so caught up. And I do too. I get what I'm saying. He just lies. He doesn't care. And going, thinking back to Simpson Masoli, thinking back to the act of 1986. Thinking back to George H.W. Bush, thinking back to weapons of mass destruction and all the innocent people we killed. Don't forget Madeleine Albright. They said our sanctions against Iraq are going to kill 500,000 children. Are you OK with that? She goes, yes, because the end result is good. She literally said it's OK for us to kill 500,000 Iraqi children who are innocent. Because the end result was good. And look where we are. They freaking, they all do it. They all do it. Someone said, well, the midterms change anything. No, it won't change anything. I mean, look who the Republicans are. Look what our freaking, our spy agencies, they, you know, they all said there was no, nothing there with the Hunter Biden thing. And now they say, oh, yeah, it was. Well, what are you going to do about it? It's like, they lie. They all do. Look at Lindsey Graham. They got him interviewed the other day. Say Joe Biden's the nicest guy ever. And if you don't like Joe Biden, you don't. It, the whole thing's the same. I mean, look, I'm still going to vote for the Republican. Don't get me wrong. And I'll still vote for Herschel if he wins the primary. And I imagine Brian Kemp. I hope Brian Kemp wins the primary. I mean, they're better than the Democrats. But it's not going to change anything. This is impossible. In fact, it's even worse because a lot of times what happens is the Republican Party is so freaking idiotic. They set the stage for people like Fauci to come in and take over. I mean, 
Robert Mueller, Mueller, whatever the hell his name is, Victoria Newland, um, Fauci. These guys all lasted within pro- Republican uh, administrations too. You know, you see what I'm saying? So what happens is a Republican will be on this moral crusade to fight them over there before they come over here, or they're going to be on a moral crusade for do something. And then the Democrats say, no, no, no. Then 15, 10 years later, when the Democrats take over, they say, oh, yeah, good job, Republicans. Now we're going to use the TSA, the uh, Homeland Security. Now we're going to come busting heads. And it's just the Republicans do this all the time. They get some moral crusade that we got to get involved with, and that opens up more and more big government, and the Democrats – they know how to use it, and they just – it's all its all fake. It's not going to change anything. It won't. Not a thing. I mean, again, you should vote for the Republican over the Democrat, I grant you. But at the end of the day, nothing's going to change. Um, anyway, for me, that was, that was phenomenal because, again, reading C.S. Lewis' book and then seeing it visualized in a, like a cartoon thing, the explicit nature of Satan, he doesn't care. He lies. And I just – that hits me hard. I'm like, man, he just does not care. He lies. You know who else doesn't care? Let me show you something else who doesn't care. Check this out. Look at the baby. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. But he doesn't lie. He just says, no, I'm hungry. I want some meat. All right, let's see what we got. Jeff B. Late. All right. Can I hold VTV in a brooch on? Absolutely. Absolutely. You should own a VTV in a brokerage account. 100%. Mm-hmm. All right. My man's uh, 57, 38,000 saved and no debt. No what? What should we say? I said voluntary compliance to my. Oh, for taxes, right? Um, I just got a note that Viva Frey is live now. All right, gotcha. So Pooping While Standing will jump off to go see his better friends of Viva Frey. Wisconsin still has lone driver's masking. What's my thoughts on that person's feminism? A woman is simultaneously a victim and empowered until something happens. Then she chooses which state benefits her the most. I'm not sure what that means, actually. A woman is simultaneously a victim and empowered until something happens. Then she chooses which like state to live. Well, you know what? The problem there is that she's simultaneously that because she doesn't have a good man in her life. I mean, that's just a fact. You get a good, righteous guy, she won't be choosing which state benefits her the most. I, I, I look, man, I, you know, I'm a man. You're, I, I mean... <laughs> Women need good men to lead them. That's 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 just that simple. That doesn't mean look. I don't want anyone to say, "Oh my," that's not saying. Look, I got two god, two daughters, two sons, and and you know who knows what's going to happen. My wife and I have a, a very good relationship of joint, but at the end of the day, uh, the, this is what the men are supposed to do. It's just that simple. And men, and like, so I'm watching this whole thing. This stupid chick or dude, Thomas, whatever the hell that guy's, whatever the, that freaking swimmer from University of Pennsylvania. And all these right-wing neocons were saying, when are women going to stand up? And I'm like, this is the problem, man. Like, you guys are so freaking, you, you've, you know, what? Oh, we're going to let women fight the battles for us, huh? Uh, it's just as crazy. And uh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I got no, look, I don't like that person winning the, the swimming. It's freaking nuts. We all know it. It's insane. But for conservatives to say, oh, Women, you got to do something about this. Well, they did. And they chose that they're okay with this or else they wouldn't have voted the way they voted for that. It's just that simple. And the men are just like, well, I guess if they like it, it's okay. And that's basically what we've said. We said, well, no, no, if the women like it, it's okay. And you're like, well, when are you going to stand up, men? You know, we had the Title IX. That hurt men. But we're too afraid to say no. <clears throat> men are better at sports. They're more physical, more active, stronger. Faster, it's not even debatable. It's not even debatable. And so Title IX comes around, and we got, you know, they're they're getting rid of men's sports because, and that, and actually, that doesn't bother me that much, frankly, because you're sitting there saying, well, women are taxpayers too, you know, they, you know, but the facts are, there's not as many women athletes as there is men. And so, as such, you said they're okay. So we're looking at we're going to have 50 scholarships for men, 50 scholarships for women, because that's fair, and that's a good argument. 
But at the end of the day, like, well, how many men play sports versus how many women in high schools? So we'll just use that for example. And that's what it should be based on, the actual athletic prowess. Not the prowess so much, but the athletic participation. And you can even use cheerleaders. I don't care. I don't care. But, I mean, that's the thing is men just – it's freaking – we've uh, – I don't know what happened, man. And, I, again, the whole point is hard times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Yeah, I don't know what that saying is, but that circular thing. And we are now at the the, the precipice of, uh, of hard times, you know, because weak men create hard times. That's what I think it is because men have been weak. We've neglected our duty to raise our families and be in charge. And, again, if you think for a second, I sit there and tell my wife, we're doing this, honey. It's not like that at all. We have a good relationship, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, I, hate, I don't want to say it's my call, but I am the leader of the family. It's just that simple. And that's, you know what's something that's funny? That's what women want. Why do you think they choose the safety of the government? Because the government protects them. That's why. That's why they vote for the Democrats. Because the Democrats protect them because there's no man within sight to help protect them. Now, why? Because men freaking wanted to use them for their bodies, one. Two, men became stupid feminist men. And like the woman's like, dude, I'm not going to pro- procreate with you. You're a clown show. And men were cheating on them. Look, do women do crazy? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just coming in from a man. But if you're looking at a woman as your sex partner, look, I, we've all, well, I don't know we all, but I know what it's like. You're like, man, that's a hot chick. You know what I'm saying? But I want to, you know, I just, you know, let's get drunk together and see where it goes. Men have done that. The lady wakes up the next day, feels taken advantage of. Rightly so. You should have done that. I tell my kids, man, I, and my boys, I said, do not have any sexual intercourse before you're married. Don't do it. I don't care what anyone says. There, you're, not, you're opening up to nothing but risk and pain, too, for you and the, the people that you have sex with. Oh, man. Anyway, the point being is men have, have failed. And if you're going to be, if men are going to be the, the leaders, we have to hold ourselves accountable for the failing that we've had. And, uh, and as such, as you know, like I look at feminism, I say, I can't blame them. What do you think about it? You're raising, you know, your, your kids in 1960s, 1950s. Your husband's going on these freaking little romps to uh, sales pitches all over the country. Your husband has a freaking fling. And you come home and you're like, uh, you're, you're the one holding the wet bag. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't blame the woman for saying this isn't how it's supposed to be. I didn't, you know, I'm not raising my kids. So my husband can go off to work for work and, you know, have freaking go out there and do stuff with other chicks and party like it's 1999. So I'm going to be a strong woman. And I'm going to go and bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan. Uh, nah, man, that's where we fell off. You know, you got you to look in the mirror for the men and say, what did we do wrong? I, look, I, I know, look, I'm not going to get too deep into it. Trust me. My own family, I've seen that a, my, a million times a Sunday. And I said, man, just freaking the the lack of bill to control what's in your pants for a man is, and then throw some alcohol in there, that's that's our fault. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. All right, so Jay Peaks is uh, 64. He's retiring. Should I invest with annuity with an income? Dude, see, this, I don't know. I don't know what the circumstances are. So he has 130000 k should he invest in an annuity with an income rider? Anyone who says yay or nay because they hate annuities, no, and they love annuities, yes, they don't know what the hell they're talking about because they don't have any idea of what your circumstances are. Hey, Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Yeah, I like tips. No problem with tips at all. I, Patrick, I, yeah, no, no, not an issue. What are your thoughts on investment programs that give you pretend? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a. I'm not a big fan. Um, they used to, back in the late 80s, they had this thing called portfolio insurance. This is before I was actually involved in, but you know, I studied it when I was in college. And it just didn't, and none of this stuff pays out. So what happens is you're basically paying for insurance. Now, if you want to do like puts and options on that and hire some you know firm to do that for, I got no qualm with that. But you know, they're giving you a, a 20% downside protection, uh, limiting your gains to 100%. I, I, get, I get 100%. I get all that. I just, at the end of the day, my radar goes up, my spidey senses, because I like, I remember portfolio insurance. I remember the, uh, uh, a lot of the annuity stuff back in the old days never panned out like they promised, simply because they, they overpromised in a lot of uh, universal life insurance. A lot of these guys overpromise and underdeliver. And you don't know that you're going to be underdelivered until it's too late. Um, it's just, just, just a fact that, you know, I've sold annuities. I mean, I've sold them myself. And so I'm not 
you know, I'm not an anti annuity guy, I'm not stupid Ken Fisher, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, when you're factoring on those fees, it's awful hard to, to make the, it's awful hard to turn the turbine. And on top of that, not just that's the fees on the annuities, when you're not using dividend, as we talked about earlier in this episode, if you don't have dividends reinvesting, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. And a lot of these programs, they don't reinvest dividends. And that's, uh, you, you got to have your dividends, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I mean, I, look, I talk about this a lot, and t- well, probably not that much, but I've had talked about where I can see the benefit of index annuities, you know, because they give you downside risk. I get it. I can, you know, in 2000, you would have loved to have done an index annuity, big 100%. The problem is that the dividends you're leaving on the table are offer a lot of protection against downside risk too. Not to the extent that an annuity did, but not only does it offer downside risk mitigation, but it also gives you upside without the uh, without the ceiling. I, you know, just look at Wellington, for perfect example. From 2001 and two, Wellington was down one year, 2002. I mean, but it wasn't much. In 2008, it was down 22%. I mean, that's bad, but eh, it just, it wasn't, in my opinion, if you look at Welling, the history of Wellington Fund, you know, I wrote a book on it. Um, the short-term risks are well worth it for sure. Uh, historically, will that be the same? I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem. Yeah. People forget the guidelines within a week, six feet or closer than mask. Yeah, that's, that's 100%, Jeff. People are, this is what the they want. <laughs> That's what the cabal wants. They want you super busy so you don't take the time to inform yourself. So we all chase that carrot, you know, freaking the cir- the bread and circuses. H.W. believed too much in the top side of the laugh, uh, George H.W. Bush. The Romer Romer study proved that tax revenue stream was impeded at a much lower tax rate. And I'm not sure that uh, Christina Romer, I, I wouldn't trust her to save my life. Uh, I don't think you can prove anything economics way. Uh, we prove it. It's kind of like saying we prove that higher interest rates cause uh, will nip nip inflation in the butt. It, it just it doesn't do it. We prove that a high debt to GDP will will be uh, will be high inflation, high interest rates, and we just don't see it. it just there's no proof. And Christina Romer, she's clown show. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Clown show is Christina Romer. I don't know who the other Romer guy is, but is that there used to be a senator from, wasn't there a senator or something like that from Colorado, Romer, Romer? I don't know if they're kin. I don't know. But uh, right. Jeff Melvin, who plays for the Melvins, uh, is two years. Well, you can't really, I mean, obviously, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, two years from retirement. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> so we had uh, uh, fresh, uh, fresh uh, Jeff. Jazzy Jeff Melvin, who plays for the Melvins, is a band, by the way. Um, anyway, he says he's two years. Most of my money's in 401k. Sounds like he's fully invested. I would take some gains off the table unequivocally. Yes, sir. Without question. Without question. Um, Christmas in March at the Scanlon House. Brad says we have a lot of Amish in our area. They never locked down, did not mask, did not get in. Right on percent. That's that's just how dare you? How dare you? Amish get a lot of sun and vitamin D and work. Is there any? I mean, when we lived in Virginia, there's you know some heavy set Mennonites, but Mennonites you know they do uh, a little bit more modern than the Amish, but not that many. Not that many heavy set Mennonites. That's for sure. The greatest lie that Satan ever sold is to convince people he knows. Oh, one hundred percent, or or to laugh at him. He's just a, you know, a, a character, a cartoon character in tights. What kind of like that video I just showed? He looks like ah, Satan. He's a silly guy, but that's what C.S. Lewis said that he never existed, or he's a silly, you know, little cartoon character in tights. One hundred percent. It's just you know, it's freaking evil personified, and he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Just as long as you get off your your. You're straight and narrow with God. He will do anything, man. 
I just, I just, I tell this to myself all the time when I start getting pissed off. I'm like, just remember that's satanic because he's forcing you off. And I look, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sinner. I'm a big hypocrite. Like Paul, Paul talks about it all the time. I said, I wish I weren't like that. And I pray, I said, give me, I'll pray enough. Give me the strength to recognize Satan's evil deeds. But he's not a little silly cartoon character in tights. And he certainly exists for sure. All right, Ray, we're going to have to ban you. Better C.S. Lewis read than screw tape is the weight of glory. I actually have not read that. But we're banning Ray for challenging screw tape letters. Cannot challenge the screw tape letters. I'm just joking. I have not read The Weight of Glory. I did read end up, I just, I did get end up reading a, uh, I forgot what it was, just you know, about two weeks ago. I'm reading a book right now. Um, what is the book I'm reading right now? It's uh, it's actually pretty interesting. I uh, took a while to build, but once it's build, hang on a second, so. Uh, I think her name's Wells. Hold on just a second. So I read in the morning my nonfiction, and then I read at night my fiction. And uh, who that? Oh boy, what do you want, girl? New dad. It's uh. Connie Wills, I said Connie Wills. One second. Right here. All right. I'm on a live stream. You want to come join? What's that? Hey, cool. All right, cool. We're going to cancel this out. Chloe Grace, look. Hey, Chloe. Hey, what's not? You're good. Why are you going to stomp on Pops? Up on pop. Were you not trying to be on here anymore? I was just spinning. Did you want to show everybody your um Care Bridge? Well your Care Bridge shirt, but your uh Brad Cat Z shirt? Oh yeah, that's the same. Yeah. yeah. Care Bears. All right. Chloe designed what well, she designed, but she came up with this idea on a t shirt that she's marketing to her friends. It's way cool while she's doing that. So this is a pretty good book. If you guys are interested, I'll share it with you. It took a while to develop, but uh Connie Willis doomsday book pretty interesting part of oxford time travel books i don't know why i've always loved time travel stuff I'm not sure why uh but it's, it's it's getting good now about 75 percent of the way done it's been getting good for about the last 50 nah, percent you know about halfway i was like man am i gonna this better have something going on but it does what i'm saying all right here we go Rad cow disease. Look at that. Rad cow. He's got a mom tattoo. He's got chains. He's on a skateboard. He's got his cool sunglasses. Rad cow. Chloe came up with that. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. <laughs> Finnegan, the goat of all lazy dogs. You know what goat means, Coco? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the goat of all lazy dogs. Look at him. Oh, my lands. <laughs> That's you are the goat except when he gets a oh man when he's when he gets a little fly in his bonnet there or whatever being his bonnet he'll just go like back and like like finn is there anything in that brain that uh regulates you because uh <laughs> oh my goodness oh Yes, I man, I just got a video from yes, I did, uh Diane Jane, that guy. I did follow him because they had some lady on there talking initially about the stupid pandemic stuff. And then I just have this video that I have in my watch later. Right here. Jesus based prophecy versus Israel based prophecy. This is from All right, um, Bibles that you would be please look up Gal Galatians, excuse me, Galatians. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I, you know, there's, I got to follow so many things. It's hard to keep track of what's what. But, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's uh, 
the Liberty Fellowship Montana. And I came across them because they had some lady. It was the election stuff. That's what it was. It was the election stuff, not COVID. And they gave her a chance to, or maybe, I think it was election stuff. And because uh, she got banned or so I can't remember, right? Legal mindset live streaming. Oh, what the hell is that? Oh, Jeremy, did I hurt his feelings? He's going to watch a different live stream? Oh, no. Viva Fred has much better hair. Look at this. Does Viva have the uh, the cul-de-sacs? We call those cul-de-sacs. They're right there. The founders didn't see that yeah, 100%, Ray. The founders didn't see the career politician. Yep, I, that ah, crazy. Yeah, Grassley. Right. Yeah, but that's the problem. The Republicans said, well, I don't like, I like term limits, except I, we got to keep Grassley in there because he's so important. And it's just the whole thing is a clown show. And you're like, no, you don't. You know, let's get someone else in there. But no, because, you know, he'll lose the, uh, uh, the power of incumbency. Well, that that's that sucks, but but that's the problem is the the, the Republicans play a little bit more fair than the Democrats. Uh, they don't. I mean, it's just that's what there is to it. But you know, you have term limits. Just don't vote for the guy. But you know, you know he's going to win the primary because that's he's got the money. Yeah, I heard that man. Prayers for Clarence Thomas. I hope he's okay. Eesh. All right. Uh. Yeah. Love lust. Yeah. Yeah, that was weird about Scalia. One hundred percent. That was uh, that was one hundred. I'll never forget that. And it actually look, man, Scalia is in a better place, but it, it it was a win for us in the long run. But I remember when that happened. I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. It, but it turned out, which is kind of weird when you think about it. I'm not saying anything about Clarence Thomas, but um, it, by the way, my my I have believe it or not. Scalia was two years ahead of, or two years behind, I think two years ahead of my wife's dad in high school. So my wife's dad was in an orphanage in the Bronx uh, when he was young. And a freaking nun kicked him and broke his ribs, because that's what Catholics are supposed to do, because his little brother could not stop peeing the bed at night. Good stuff, good stuff. So we got priests that are molesting little boys, and we got freaking nuns that are breaking uh breaking ribs good stuff catholics and i'm a look, catholic 100 but it's just it's just before we start saying you know bow down to the uh the cloth let's uh yeah maybe we, we we anyway the point being is there's a lot of uh bad things that happen inside the catholic church so, so all these the only reason i got to point that out still ticks me off to this day a little boy who was given up to an orphanage because his dad ran off his mom had was had no there's no way means to take care of him Sent him to an orphanage and he got freaking his his, his uh, ribs kicked and broken by the nun because his little brother uh, would have not stop pissing the bed. Freaking, it's that's not that's insanity, and uh, ah, it ticks me out so much. Anyway, point being is, so he uh, he was a good student, so he found his way because this one Catholics actually, you know, and I don't know what they do nowadays, but around here, they're going to Catholic school is freaking like taking a mortgage. Um, at least this in the South. I'm not sure about like in New Orleans. I don't know about Philadelphia, but right here in Atlanta, it ain't cheap to go to a Catholic school. Not that any Catholic family with a big family could afford, unlike the old days. Anyway, so he, uh, I think he was in high school in the 40s or 50s. I can't remember. But it turned, when we found out Scalia died and we found out he went to this high school, my wife said, oh, man, my dad went to that high school. I said, really? So I looked up the yearbook and sure enough, man, there's old Anthony Scalia. Uh, he's either two years ahead of my wife's dad or two years behind. I, I assume it's two years ahead. And I got his picture um, in the uh, the book. I, I'll name the head. I can't remember the name of the uh, the high school. But how cool. I think I want to say Xavier, but I'm not sure that's true. What are you doing? Oh, that, that took a lot of energy there. <laughs> There's no way to avoid feeling hurt during youthful sexual adventures. I could not agree more. Could not agree more. The road less traveled explain love less pure. Oh, the road less traveled by um, who the hell was that guy? I came to a fork in the road and I took the one less traveled. That's interesting. There's Cam Camilla Hudson. All right. 
Well, don't ah, don't put your all right. So do me a flavor, Camilla. Uh, she said she, she was a certain age, and she said how much they have a net worth and no debts. Um, don't don't say too much about your circumstance, assuming that's your right name, and certainly there's your picture too. So yeah, it could be a bot. I don't know, but just you know, if if that is. You know, let's just, you know, Chef Jeff. No one knows who Chef Jeff is, right? So if Chef Jeff's going to say, man, I made bank when I was a chef in Key West. I got five million bucks. And here's my bank account numbers. No one's going to know who he is. But if you your real name and stuff in your picture, uh, try to be a little bit more secure with your personal data, if you will. Um, yeah, I like dividend stocks. But you, you said ETFs or dividend stocks. They're not mutually exclusive. So as I said, um, a bunch uh, VTV, I'm a big fan of the uh, Vanguard large cap value fund. You're, you're, you're not going to generate uh, five to six percent in dividend income. But, you know, I would think I would think that five percent doesn't seem out of, out, of, out of line for a 10 year average rate of return. No way. But, yeah, so going back to uh, Camilla, that's fantastic, Camilla. Living frugal, no debt. Um. Yeah, uh, ba uh, Bayesian um, would say the risk isn't worth the upside loss and insured the best. I, I agree. Uh, thanks to fire movement, right on. I, I, I'm not going to Idaho. I'll go to Tennessee before Idaho. I, I know a lot of people have Idaho, but if you've got California tags, look out. They don't like your kind, which is too bad because the people are moving to these places are only making – the, the other states more red. I wish people would recognize that. I've said a thousand times. If only 10, remember, more people in California voted for Trump than they did in Texas. That shows you how big a state California is. There are more Trump voters in California than there were in Texas. So if 10% of those Trump voters in California left and went to other states, that will change the world forever. I mean, just think about it. If 10% of those Californians, now off the top of my head, I can't remember how many it was, 600,000, I think there's 6 million voters for Trump in California in 2020. If 600,000, yeah, that'd be 10%, moved. 50,000 a month, and they moved to Arizona, Nevada, uh, Texas, Georgia, um, North Carolina, Virginia. Yeah, because they're probably not going to go from California to Wisconsin. That would, that would change everything, man. Everything. Or Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, if they're native of there, for sure. Right. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin leg and A. Batmobile lost his will, Joker got away. Hey, everybody now. Right. All right. I just started reading cr Crime and... Oh, man, that sounds painful. Ooh, I tell my son, I don't know if y'all ever read uh, Thomas Wolfe, A Man in Full. So if you like Tom Wolfe, and you should, not the original Tom Wolfe from the early turn of the last century, uh, the newer one, you know, Bonfire of the Vanities. And I was telling my boy about a man in full because he talks about uh, football right here in Atlanta. And this, I, really, I haven't read that in years, years, years. So I'm very much looking forward to reading that again, too. I think my next fiction book I got lined up is, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, man. All right. Uh, should I put off for time this year to see what all this global and certain inflation takes us? Uh, okay. So where does it take us? <laughs> I mean, what do you think next year is going to be different? I mean, dude, you only got one life, brother. I mean, come on. I, look, you got to do what you got to do, but I'm just sitting there thinking – uh, there's a reason you're talking about retiring. You're going to keep working because of what's going on in the world. You can't control it. I mean, but you're going to work for another year as, 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 to avoid a do, doing what you want to do because of the global situation. That would be it. All right. Um, funny how the left wants us to buy EVs, but not pay back student loans. They're bored. Oh. Doug, Doug's way too diplomatic. They're bordering on the irrational. Doug, <laughs> the left is inherently irrational. That's the best thing about being the left. You don't have to be logical. You don't have to be rational. You don't have to be consistent. It's satanic, man. And trust me, some Republicans are like that too. But just look at, you hear what Dick Durbin uh, was say, saying now? 
that he hopes the Republicans don't give uh, the stupid lady who's nominated for the Supreme Court the hard time. He hopes it's civil. I'm like, oh, yeah, where were you there, Dick Turbin? Yeah, oh, that's a clown show. Yeah, I kind of wanted that too, actually, Paul. I was wondering if she's trolling. I, I completely, yeah. How does inflation affect the performance of growth versus value historically? Yeah, well, if you look at growth stocks, which have no dividends, generally speaking, value stocks do during inflationary times, what's going to give you more dividends? Most likely value stocks because they're going to keep paying dividends as the uh, inflation kicks in, is the, is the idea. That doesn't mean it's going to be like that. But uh, I'll take dividend stocks any day of the week over the inflation, and especially in deflation for sure. Dan Trainer's retired right on, man. Right. Uh, link to the shirt. We don't have that yet, man. Uh, Rad Cow, yeah, I know. I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make something like with this guy right here. With that guy. So this version with Pablo. And Denise, you gotta you gotta email me again what you said to put on that shirt because I thought it was class. I just can't remember. I'm I'm negative on the four percent rule. I'm not a fan of it at all. Um Ugh, crime and punishment. It just, I, I've never read it. It just, um, it sounds painful. All right, my friends, I'm going to get out of here, man. Um, four uh, Eastern Time live streams with Chuck. He recommends before you jump in with both watch his lecture on DVD titled The Destruction of Jerusalem. Um, from his uh, the title of that, I think I like where it's going. I, I haven't watched that video yet, but it's next on my list of. Oh, look at that! Oh, man. My breast thing. Pablo was jonesing, jonesing for some short ribs I did on the grill today with gas grill. He was going nuts. That that was some. I tell you. Don't be too hesitant to throw short ribs on the grill. Now, what I did is I did it for about 45 minutes on a low heat with the oven, the, uh, the, the uh, thing open with a bone down. All right. 45 minutes. Eh, it's about a pretty much a low heat. I mean, it was still the, uh, the thing was open, you know, the grill cover about 45 minutes. And then I flipped them over. You know, they're about this thick, about four minutes on high heat. People were asking for more. That was good. And they're short ribs. You don't think you can use those as a steak. You think you got to use them as slow and low. Uh uh man. Mm. An hour time, those suckers were good. You can even cut off the, the bone if you want and cook them in a lot quicker. But the bone, just it just tastes so good. Oh, my goodness. All right, there you go. Legal mindset as a conservative lawyer. Does sit inside with Viva. All right, cool. I think he's at New Jersey. Right on. All right, there you go. So Cam Camilla is saying, I was never going to render an advice because I know how ignorant you can be towards some kind of advices. I keep my advice. I don't understand what that means. I'm missing it. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, so Paul asked if uh, Camilla was a troll, and then she goes, I was never going to render an advice because I know how ignorant you can be towards some kind of advices. I keep my advice to myself. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Please, ma'am, I need your advice. Oh, no, we're getting trolled. All right. Look at I was one, man. Right on. We're getting, we're getting trolled. Please, ma'am, I need your advice. I think we're getting trolled. And like, I don't know. I just know that. Uh, uh, Dr. Scott Peck, MD. Right on, man. I'm going to see if we're getting more trolled. Uh, oh, man, I just want to read this. Are we getting... Oh, right here. Yes, we are. We're getting trolled. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is fantastic. Right here. 
I like the way you drop words. You are inspiring. I'm 38 trying to achieve. Oh, my goodness. Paul Smith, you freaking are the man, man. You are the man. Look at Paul Smith. He saw me. How did you pick that uh, troll duo team right on? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, right on. Next will put a – oh, that is awesome. Next will put a Bitcoin WhatsApp number. Oh, man. That is funny. So, Paul Smith, you win the award for the night. I can't believe we're actually having a – I was actually taking in. We are not getting troll boss. Ah, right. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That is classic. I got taken in by that myself. All right. Good stuff. All right. So uh, I fell for it. Now, Denise, you fell for it. Uh, Paul Smith did not. So good job. I think it was Paul Smith, right, who said we're being trolled. That was classic. Oh, man. I love it. These, that, man, that is classic. Right on. Very clever. Yeah, right on. And, uh, well, well, they don't make any sense. They're bots. I mean, it's crazy. These people are literally bots. And they don't make any sense because they're not human. It's, it's creepy, man. That's nuts. It's it just right here. This doesn't make, we are not getting troll boss. What the hell is that? No one knows what that means. But yet, oh, my goodness. That is, ah. I'd never seen her before. And I was like, all right, maybe it's a, a good uh, person. Yeah, right. Uh, what's your wife? What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, me too. Me too. That's how they get you. Oh, my goodness. All right. I can get out of here, my friends. Pablo's got some business to take care of. Appreciate y'all being here. God bless. Uh, let's stay positive. I, look, I'm saying that towards myself, 100%. I'm, a, I'm trying to be a better guy. I'm trying not to get too picky. I get, Well, I'll sit more later. But uh, I'm, I'm trying not to be such a um, – I'm trying to be a little bit more understanding, if that makes sense. And uh, it's tough, man. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I'm just I'm goofing you, man. Uh, God is good always. All right, we'll see you. Comment bots, Josh. I'm not a bot. God, what is, don't even know what that means. Oh, my goodness.